This video is presented by the Texas AgriLife Extension Service. At the same time, it takes several hundred years to wear away rocks to rebuild, rebuild one inch of topsoil. And off the state of Texas, we've lost several inches, maybe even 10 inches in certain areas. Off the state of Texas, it's going now and filling up our lakes from the bottom up filling up our streams and our rivers and going that out into our bays and estuaries and then also having an impact on them. And so it makes a lot of difference in where this raindrop goes. And so how do I get from here back to here? Certainly we've got to have good management. We've got to be able to be able to manage this grass, get it back established some way so we can reduce the grazing pressure that we may have on some of our land and allow it to recover. When we get into the woody species, we've got to either act as fire or have fire come back in. And so we've got to either cut down those uh, woody plants that are, are so easily taken away by fire. And so we can change it back to here so we can get this water back into the ground. When we start looking at our turf grass, and the majority of this here, uh, the water runs into the ground. And I didn't get any water runoff off of this one. Uh, as we start looking at our turf area uh, in the state of Texas, we get more runoff that carries more pollution off of it into our uh, sewer systems, into our drainways, into our waterways, uh, and with it, it carries more pollutants. We use more chemicals, more fertilizer on our turf than any other land in the state of Texas. And so as I get any runoff from that area, it's going to go straight into our streams, straight into our waterways, and carry those pollutions with that. And so what we need to do here is look at ways we can reduce the amount of turf and get it in some other kind of landscape that will help move that water back into the ground rather than reduce stormwater runoff. Now lastly, we want to look over here at this last one here, our impervious area, and see what happens here whenever we have a rain event. Uh, and that was a flood right there. But as we start looking at this here, where does this rainfall go? And when we start looking at it, very little of it is going to go into the ground. Nearly every bit of it and probably all of it is going to go run off. And so as we start looking at our streets and our highways, our parking lots, even our buildings there, then uh, we see the water is going to run off and run off in as runoff and storm water that runs off. And as it moves across our landscape, then it's going to carry those pollutions along with that. And so what we want to do here, start looking at some way that I can reduce the amount of water that runs off. And so the one thing we can do is we can talk about catchment there. And I can use everything from a rain barrel into a larger catchment and be able to catch the majority of that water that comes off that roof. For every one square foot of roof, when we get one inch of rainfall, we get about six tenths of a gallon of water that's going to come off. But once we've got our containers full and the rains, and especially on our landscape, we want to make our landscape a sponge and so that we can slow that water down and get much more of it into the ground rather than have it run off. And so I want to not only capture off of our roof, but also be able to capture in our landscape to reduce stormwater runoff uh, and the pollution that carries along with it. So a rainfall simulator can give us an idea of where rainfall goes when it rains. And so we need to start looking at how I can manage uh, from larger areas there to reduce stormwater runoff in my uh, open spaces, looking at it in our turf to make sure I get as very little runoff as I can. And then we'll start looking off of our houses and our buildings and our streets and our parking lots to be able to capture that water and get as much of it as I can, keep it there on site. And then whenever it does leave, I want it to leave as slow and as clear as it can.